Hello everyone, I'm really excited to review for you today Tecano Colour. I know, it's missing a U in that colour there, but this is the brand new Roll and Write game with the Tecanoco theming. The cute panda on the front, Roll and Write goodness, four maps to play. Well, let's jump into the sort of roughly how you play, then I'll give you pros and cons to let you know if you should add it to your collection. And just know it was provided to me by Asmodee for the review. The way it works is on your turn you take all of the four pens, you're going to roll them because they are the actual dice, these things sort of go around the pens to make them be dice, and you then choose, on as it's your turn, you choose first from the pool of four pens what you're going to take. Now they have rolled a symbol, they are already a colour, and therefore you've maybe got a combo of yellow circle or green triangle for you to use on your roll and write sheet. For the first map, maybe that's just colouring in a different piece of bamboo. You're trying to, let's say, colour in as many of the green square bamboo pieces as you can, because the further up you go, the more points it's unlocking. Oh, I've got one point from this, but if I do another couple, maybe I'll get an extra four points. You'll also be ticking off ladybirds as you get some of the taller ones done or more pieces done. You'll get these ladybirds. They're a point, but they also are end game conditions. Whoever gets their third one ends the game at the end of that round. The round being everyone getting to use a pen because on my turn, I've rolled, I've chosen a pen, then going clockwise around the table, everyone else gets to choose one of the remaining pens. So I've taken that green one out of the mix and coloured something in on my sheet, then the next player maybe chooses the blue circle, colouring something in on theirs, and so on round the table. Until everyone has coloured something in, maybe triggered some bonuses in roll and write goodness, and then the pens are all passed to the next player, they roll, and they start off the picking. The game goes until one player has got their third ladybird, that game progression that I mentioned, and at that point you total up the points. And, well, that logic pretty much stands for all of the four sheets. The basic limitations are things like when you're colouring in bamboo, you've got to start at the bottom and work your way to the top. And then in later sheets, maybe there is like the river, which you start at the top and it cascades down as you're colouring in, things like that. And each sheet does add some additional scoring methods or tweaks them up in terms of how they scored before. But that basic logic of you're choosing like a pen, that colour and symbol combination allows you to colour something in hopefully scoring you points. And when someone has that third ladybird, it's time to start counting. You do finish that turn off, so if it's my turn and I've got my third ladybird, everyone else will still get their chance to pick a pen from the middle, colouring something in, maybe even getting their own third ladybird as well. Well, let's start with the obvious thing, and that is that you're getting not one, not two, not three, but four different sheets in the box. I think that's a really good number, a really good inclusion, and you do play through them and sort of pick your logics up along the way, and things get do get a little bit busier and a little bit harder. Never exactly hard, but, you know, the first one, which is annoyingly the two panda difficulty, I don't understand why it didn't start at one panda, because it goes from two pandas to four pandas, whereas it could have gone from one to three difficulty. Um, the, the easiest one, the two panda one, that's fairly simple. You're going to be able to teach that very quickly, very easily to players. They're going to really intuitively see the further up I colour this piece of bamboo by keep taking like the pink circle. I can keep colouring in bits of pink um, bamboo and get more points from it. Oh, I can take the yellow and colour in the sun and that's going to get me points if I manage to colour it all in. And Oh, that's got me a ladybird because I've done this thing and that's a progression towards the end of the game sort of thing. It's really obvious and intuitive on that two panda one and things get a little bit busier, extra things get added in as you go up the difficulty. So you can get this game to the table straight away with people, play one sheet, and then if they're enjoying it, you can straight away step it up or just play again. 
as I alluded to, it does get a little bit busier. I think the sort of the first two, uh, the two panda and the three panda maps, they're very sort of easy to pick up. You could put that in front of most gamers, they'd know instantly what's going on. The sort of two four panda difficulty ones, you're going to put that in front of people and they can probably work it out. But it's not necessarily obvious unless you've read the rules. Uh, teaching the game to someone, oh, you can't colour this in in this direction. The river going down makes sense. The bamboo going up makes sense. But then there's like these um, sort of statue bits where you can, for some reason, do the top of it before the bottom of it. For no real obvious reason, but it just, that's how it works. So that's how you've got to play. On the other most difficult map, you've also got these uh, things floating in the air and there's no obvious or intuitive way to know that you have to do them from top to bottom other than the fact that if you look down them the score slowly gets bigger so it kind of makes sense that well the scoring is higher therefore it must be uh, needing to be done from little to large but there's no graphically stuff that makes it super intuitive for those oh I've got to start here which could have been nice Next from the sheets, well, the obvious thing to talk about has to be the pens. It's quite satisfying at the start, sort of rolling the pens, but it does get a little awkward as you're having to pass these pens around and roll them. Them being the right colours makes it look really nice. You're colouring the river in blue, you're making the sun yellow, the firework is multicoloured that you've done, so, you know, when it, it's got that burst when you've coloured it in, it looks really cool. The multicoloured dragon on the fourth map it makes it a really eye-catching experience and you certainly get people drawn in by, hang on, what? You're rolling the pens? It's one of those ones where it's like, it's not quite a gimmick because you need it for the game, but it also feels like it could have been done in a simpler way. But yeah, it's an odd one where it's like, well, you don't need different color pens, but it makes the game look nicer. They didn't need to be the dice, but it makes the game cool that you're doing that it's an odd one unfortunately there is one part of the pens that i must critique though so just under normal lighting the yellow one with white sort of symbology on it is very hard to actually see what it is it could have been black sort of symbology on yellow and that would have shown up so much better. The contrast would have been fantastic. I had to actually turn on like one of my actual like recording lights so we could see the sort of dice, the pen dice really clearly. The other colours, we never had an issue, even across the table. Oh, that's a green square you've rolled. But the yellow one, we did often find the players having to lean over and peer at that one in particular to go, oh, it's the yellow circle. Just having black symbology on it rather than white, the contrast would have just been so much better and so much more legible at, at, at just a glance. It's a bit of a shame that because that does sort of you do notice yourself having to really pay attention to the yellow one in particular. One thing people are going to want to know is, is this actually like Tekkenoko at all? And well, no, not particularly. The panda included to denote whose turn it is, well, it doesn't look anything like the cool, cute sort of panda that's on the front of the box here and that's in Tekkenoko. I think that's a weird choice. And it just feels odd that they went with that decision. There's certainly other pandas depicted in this and it just feels like the art that's on that first, like that it's your turn piece, doesn't quite match up with the Tekkenoko vibe it was going for. But even after that, it doesn't feel like, you know, Tekkenoko is um, what this is loosely sort of themed around. In that you're collecting bamboo to score objectives yeah, that's kind of there. You're colouring in the bamboo to get points. But there's not really much there from like the gardener, the um, which was like you grew the bamboo with the gardener and then you ate it with the panda. There isn't that sort of logic. There isn't the sort of tile placement, obviously, in a roll and write. And there's also not the patterns aspect that you got in the, re the original. It, it feels very much like this is a... 
a roll and write that needed a theme and they had the Tekanoko cool theme that was colourful and I do think that colourful theme adds something but it doesn't necessarily feel like it's a Tekanoko game even though it's called Tekano Colour. So there you have it, Tekano Colour. It's a fun, very colourful roll and write where you've got to roll the pens. I'm still not sure where I sit on the fence about those, whether it's a quirky fun thing or a slightly odd thing that they've included, but it makes the game work. It, those pens make it a colourful map. You've got the four different ones, so you can play the game very quickly with new people. Or, oh, we've played before, let's try one of the harder ones that do allow for some really cool comboing. And, well, that all means you've got a game that can grow with the players and you can experience and enjoy it with different people, even if they didn't like the original Tekanoko, because it doesn't have that much of a link other than the sort of colourful theme. But hopefully this has helped you know if Tekano Colour should be added to your collection. And, well, let us know in the comment section below if you've played it, what you think of it. And until next time, have a colourful, panda-filled good day.